Epitomize <laughs> In Jamaica, we say epotomy. <laughs> From its emergence among working class lesbian bar culture to its resurgence in the 1990s, the word butch has had a hidden history. While its exact origin are known, butch is still an empowered word for many. So how much do you really know about the history of the word butch? According to the Oxford English Dictionary, butch means a lesbian of masculine appearance or behavior. At the turn of the 20th century, the word butch meant tough kid or referred to a men's haircut. It surfaced as a term used among women who identified as lesbians in the 1940s, but historians and scholars have struggled to identify exactly how or when it entered the queer lexicon. Before butch became a term used by lesbians, there were other terms in the 1920s that described masculinity among queer women. According to the historian Lillian Fatterman, Bull Dagger and Bull Dyke came out of the black lesbian subculture of Harlem, where there were mama and papa relationships that looked like butch femme partnerships. Performer Gladys Bentley epitomized the style with her men's hat, ties, and jackets. Women in same-sex relationships at this time didn't yet use the word lesbian to describe themselves. Prison slang introduced the term daddy, husband, and top sergeant into the working class lesbian subculture of the 1930s. Pants became a distinctive queer style in the 1940s with hundreds of thousands of women donning utilitarian clothing to work in factories because of the war. And with the migration to the cities, bars that specifically catered to these women can thrive. It's at this time that butch materialized as an underground term used by working class women as well as gay men to describe masculinity in their own community. But more than masculine lesbian, what is the definition of butch? Writers have questioned what makes a butch woman in particular. Is it her style, what she does in bed, or who she's attracted to? And does she have to identify as a butch to be a butch? Looking back on this era, the scholar Gail Rubin wrote that butches identify primarily as masculine or prefer masculine signal, personal appearance, and style. This identity thrived in nightlife. Are you butch or femme? was a question that the Lesbian Her Story Archives founder, Joan Nessel, recalls being asked as soon as she walked into a bar. Everyone was a butcher or femme at the time, and if you weren't, you were called a kiki. Butchers and femmes faced criticism from middle and upper class lesbians who felt that they replicated heterosexual relationships. The first lesbian organization, the Daughters of Belitis, formed in 1955 and pressured butchers to appear more feminine. The queer people who didn't want to play by middle class rules instead rebelled. In 1969, a handful of butch lesbians participated in the Stonewall Riots. Yet a new generation of young political and college educated lesbians developed in the years that followed. The rise of feminism on college campuses left out working class bar dykes, and butches were even considered politically incorrect by lesbian feminists in the 1970s. They were pushed to the margins. It didn't stay that way for long. Butch and femme made a comeback in the 1980s as sexually empowering terms, and not just for working class women. There were butch bottoms and femme tops who used the terms for their own pleasure in the ballroom scene. Queer people of color used the term in categories that measured masculinity, like butch realness or butch queen. Tony Kushner's landmark 1991 play about these years, Angels in America, dubbed Joe Pitt a closeted gay Marlboro man, a mega butch in contrast to the play's femme protagonist. While butches among gay men are often seen as desirable, they were also viewed with suspicion as hiding their gay identity. A landmark novel for butch lesbian representation was Leslie Feinberg's Stone Butch Blues, published in 1993 about a working class butch lesbian who comes of age in bars, faces homophobic violence, and explores the territory between butch and trans. The Stone Butch was the epitome of the butch identity, a lesbian who did not let her partner touch her sexually. Butch lesbians and trans folks alike saw reflections of themselves in Feinberg's work. Butch has been connected to trans identities and some who identified as butch women went on to identify as trans men or trans masculine. That same year, butch visibility got even louder when butch singer Katie Lang was on the cover of Vanity Fair getting a shave by Cindy Crawford. Dykes to watch out for, the Drag King book and other publications create a culture where there's finally proof of butches. The 2000s make way for more mainstream butch visibility. Ellen debuted her talk show after coming out on her sitcom less than a decade before. With sneakers and blazers, she was the quintessential soft butch. The hit Netflix show Orange is the New Black introduced a hard butch in 2013 that was, and is, 
perhaps the first of her kind on screen. Leah Delaria plays the role of Big Boo with the butch tattoo on her arm. As a hilarious and sexual character, she defies stereotypes. With the popularity of online dating, gay men continue to have their own butch and femme dynamics and are criticized for giving masked guys more attention. While butch remains a word that's primarily used among lesbians, it's also used by non-binary and genderqueer folks. Some communities have embraced other terms for masculinity, like stud and tomboy, while mask is still used more widely by gay men and trans people. But butch has resisted being relinquished to the past. The 2015 musical Fun Home, based on Alison Bechdel's memoir, is the first musical on Broadway with the butch lesbian protagonist. It's also famous for the stern ballad, Ring of Keys, where young Allison first recognizes her own identity as she notices a masculine delivering woman and her humongous ring of keys. Reflecting on the memory, Allison calls that woman an old school butch. Whether old or new school, it looks like butches are here to stay.